What's up, guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. I gotta talk to you guys about Gamescom 2015 and how Microsoft completely killed it. Now, Microsoft killed it this year at Gamescom because they were kind of by themselves. It wasn't the same situation that they had with E3 where they were going against Sony. Some people thought that Microsoft won E3. Some people thought Sony won E3. So it was a really close competition. Gamescom was a completely different situation because Sony decided not to even go to Gamescom this year. They felt that E3 and Gamescom were too close in proximity and they wanted to hold their next conference until Paris Games Week. So that's what Sony's going to be doing next. But it didn't stop Microsoft from coming out and showing their ass because they did. They came out and showed some really awesome games. I want to talk to you guys about some of the ones that really got me excited and some of the news that they announced that really got me excited and happy to have an Xbox One. First of all, Quantum Break. The game that everybody's been wondering about, we saw very little of looks amazing this game looks beautiful it looks like infamous second son times three it looks that good uh it has beautiful lighting beautiful character uh lighting effects particle effects if you guys don't know what this is about this is the game that remedy has been working on for a while that's supposed to be created in tandem with a tv show that coincides with what you do they did uh kind of announce at gamescom that the entire show will be on the disc so when you buy the game, you're going to have the game, and then you're going to have the show as well. So, And they did show uh, scenes from the show. It looks very well put together. Some very well, uh, highly noted actors are in this show. The main protagonist, I don't know his name, but if you guys have seen any of the X-Men movies, it's Iceman. That's who he is. He's the main character in Quantum Break. game looks really amazing. I'm excited for it, and I can't wait to play it. Another game they show was Crackdown 3. I love the original Crackdown uh, games. They're really fun, just mindless excitement, jumping across town, picking up cars, and just wearing people out. This is more of the same. It looks really good, nice, tight, uh, cel-shaded characters. The world looked really, really big when they showed. And another thing they showed that was kind of mind-boggling is that this game has complete, total destructible environments. Everything you see can be destroyed. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you do before you get to a mission point. Because if you destroy a building that's supposed to have a mission in it, or an area that's supposed to have a mission, then you could end up breaking the game. So I want to see how that actually works. I'm excited for Crackdown 3, and uh, I hope you guys are too. Another game they showed that probably got me most excited of any game I saw at Gamescom was Scalebound. Now this game is made by Platinum Games. The same guys who brought uh, Bayonetta 2, these guys are extremely talented, um, and it shows. It really, really shows that they're talented. This game looked beautiful. It showed the main protagonist coming down on a dragon. Uh, he has what appears to be half dragon. His hand is like a dragon scaled hand. And he has this huge dragon with him. And it's his friend. And he came down and he started fighting these people. And he has this really awesome ethereal type sword. That when he swings it, 20 feet of ethereal light comes out and slaps the shit out of whoever he's fighting. His dragon fights alongside him. And they were doing some really awesome stuff. They were like teaming up together taking on enemies, and then toward the end of the demo, they showed this huge, monstrous creature come out, and they fought it together. He actually turned into, like, a dragon form to fight this thing. This game looks like it's going to be super amazing. I'm really excited about this game. They also announced it'll be a four-player co-op mode, and I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm guessing it'll be online, which might force me to buy another Xbox One for my wife. This game looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to play it. Microsoft also announced DVR functionality coming in 2016. So if you like that kind of stuff, you watch cable, 2016, you'll be able to save your shows on your Xbox. They also showed their new chat pad, which is a peripheral that plugs into the bottom of the controller. And it gives you the ability to use a full quarterly keyboard and talk to people or chat with people, however you want to do it. They also did a little bit more talking about backwards compatibility. That backwards compatibility is actually going to be available in November. It's going to have 100 games at least with hundreds to follow. I'm really happy about that. I think any console needs to have some degree of uh, backwards compatibility that you don't need to pay for. So I'm really, really excited about that. They did uh, talk about Killer Instinct Season 3, and they showed Rash from Battletoads as one of the new characters in Season 3. It showed him whooping some ass. It looked really awesome. It looked like he fit into the uh, Killer Instinct universe really, really well. Uh, his hand was getting big, doing his classic moves from, you know, the old school SNES days. It looked really good, so I'm excited about that. I'm not really big into Killer Instinct. I just was kind of late to that party, but the game does look phenomenal, and if you're into that, it's another good thing. 
Bloodstained, the game by Koji Igarashi. Koji Igarashi actually came out on the stage himself, him and his interpreter, and they talked about their new game, Bloodstained. If you don't know who Koji Igarashi is, he's the man who created Castlevania Symphony of the Night. He's behind uh, a few actual Castlevania games. And he's a very, very talented guy. He used to work at Konami. Before Konami lost their mind and started firing people and closing studios and destroying Silent Hills and all this stuff, they had some really talented people working there. Koji Igarashi was one of them. He left the company, started a Kickstarter for this game, Bloodstained, raised over $5 million for it, and uh, or 4.6 or something. A lot of goddamn money they made for this game. And uh, he actually came out on the stage at Gamescom and talked about Microsoft and how Xbox One and Windows 10 are going to be actually cross-play. So I didn't even know that was going to be an option. You can actually play this game on your PC with someone on the Xbox One. I think it's going to be awesome. The game looks like it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be a 2.5D adventure game in the vein of Castlevania. This is Castlevania's spiritual successor. This is the next Castlevania, period. So if you like Koji Garashi, you like Castlevania, you should be really excited about Bloodstained. They showed a demo for DirectX 12, and the demo was prepared by Square Enix, and it blew my, my brain out of the back of my head. I couldn't believe it. My eyes were crying at the end of this <laughs> at the end of this uh, this tech demo, they showed uh, what looked like a square character, a female, in this huge environment. And basically the camera was moving around. You could tell that someone was manipulating the camera, going to extreme close-ups of her lips and her eyes, zooming all the way back so you could see the world. If DirectX 12 is, is uh, responsible for these types of graphics, the Xbox One has a very, very huge leap coming in its near future. It's going to be a huge leap. Because those graphics look totally insane. I don't know if it was PC only or what. If Xbox One has the capability to run these type of graphics in the future, PlayStation is going to have some real trouble on their hands. And I, I'm not a developer, so I don't know. I'm just telling you what they showed and what they said. And if DirectX 12 looks the way that they showed at Gamescom, uh, competition needs to really tighten up and make sure they stay on the square because it really looks amazing to me. They uh, showed Dark Souls 3. Uh, and Dark Souls 3 is a game I'm super excited about. I love uh, Bloodborne. That was really the first of the Souls types of games that I actually completed. Dark Souls, Demon Souls, have them, never beat them. I was playing other games that were a little difficult for me at the time, and I didn't understand exactly what I needed to do. I was like, why put myself through this torture when I can just go fucking race a cart or something? But Bloodborne kind of opened my, my mind up to what I was supposed to be doing and what the experience really was and how rewarding it was. And so I'm super excited to get Dark Souls 3. Uh, and this game is going to actually borrow a lot from Bloodborne. So I'm extra excited about it. Homefront The Revolution is another game they talked about. They didn't show too much about this game, but pretty much they helped you understand what it is. You are a part of a rebel group. Uh, at the end of, well, in the first game, if you guys never played Homefront, the United States is taken over by Korea and uh, or China. Or one of them. I'm trying to remember which one. The people look real similar. But it was taken over uh, during the war, and basically uh, United States citizens, Americans, became prisoners of war in our own land. And in Homefront, the revolution, this rebel group is actually going to be responsible for uh, taking out these invading factions. The game looks phenomenal. Now, in the original uh, Homefront, the gameplay was great. The graphics, not so much. It seems like now they've kind of got this in, in order, and this game can really be a huge hit for the Xbox One. I'm excited for it. Now, the last two games I want to talk about are Forza 6, which is a game that looked really, really great and quite possibly the greatest uh, auto racing simulator I've ever seen. It looked really, really phenomenal. I was looking at the backgrounds, looking at the cars, looking at the close-up details, looking at the way everything looked when it moved. It looks almost photorealistic, and, and a lot of people say that about the last one, too. But it looked great. I'm just not. In, it's not really my cup of tea. Kind of like FIFA. I don't play certain games, but it does look really good. And so, from the visual aesthetic alone, it kind of excited me. I was like, "Shit, look at how good this looks." Uh, Forza Six is going to move a lot of units. A lot of people are already huge fans of the franchise, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Forza Six looked amazing. Now, the last game I want to talk about is Tomb Raider: Rise of the Tomb Raider. They showed a long demo of Lara Croft. In this new game on the Xbox One, let me say, this is one of the best looking games I've ever seen. I mean, I'm just being honest. It looks that good. The character models, the animation, the lighting effects, the particle effects. Lara Croft is a pure badass at this point. 
Uh, she's not like she was in the first game. She's creeping around very stealthily and, and killing people like she's a gangster. Okay, she's stabbing people in the neck. You gotta keep screwdrivers and razor blades away from this woman because she uses them without abandon at this point. She is really out to hurt people and it's pretty obvious she's trying to protect herself, right? The game looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to play it. It showed a long demo. My Xbox One is just steamed up, ready for this game. Uh, and PlayStation owners will get it in a year, but I gotta have this now. It looks really, really good. This game could possibly be the competition that uh, Naughty Dogs might be looking for. Or not looking for, depending on how they feel about it. The game looks great. It's in the same genre, and I'm super excited about it. You guys let me know in the comments section below, what was your favorite moment from Gamescom 2015? Microsoft killed it this year. I'm super excited about it. I'm really, really excited to see what happens at Paris Games Week. If Sony has something up their sleeve, because if they don't, if Sony doesn't have anything up their sleeve at this point, Microsoft has a good opportunity or a huge chance to grab some of that profit share and, and move it over to their side. Because they've actually got games. They've got exclusives. They got That's all I heard during Gamescom. Microsoft exclusive. Xbox One exclusive. Exclusive. I couldn't believe it. So I'm really excited about it. You guys let me know what you think. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and show support of the channel. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.